This is a very niche topic, okay? This is for people who are familiar with both Japanese and Korean in some way, because uh, this is not a general question that I get asked on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, we're not gonna be going in depth between the two languages, uh, talking about those differences, that would be a crazy long video, nor are we going into every single particle in the two languages, we're just going to be focusing on these two sets. Un, nun, the topic marker in Korean, and wa in Japanese. E and ka, the subject marker in Korean, or ga in Japanese. Un and nun work almost identically to wa in Japanese, and so does e and ka, which works almost exactly like ga in Japanese. However, I've seen this problem a lot. People going from one language to the other, and they'll just swap wa for un or nun, or vice versa, or ga for e or ka, and the sentence can sometimes sound very awkward in Korean. In fact, I did this a lot too. I studied Korean after I'd already studied Japanese for three years, and a lot of people in the beginning told me I kind of talk Korean like I'm a Japanese person. They didn't mean that offensively, they just meant that the style of speaking I would sometimes do by using the wrong markers would be more like how a Japanese person might speak Korean because they're simply swapping these in their head. Okay, a little bit of history first. Historically, ga didn't really exist much in Korean. It, it was there, it just wasn't really used. So the subject marker E instead was used after both consonants and vowels. So you might be thinking, well, that's a bit confusing, right? We use the E after a consonant and ka after a vowel, so you can clearly hear it. Yes, and it's possible that the reason that this ka started becoming more widely used is as the language changed, there started to be a lot more words that would become confusing with this E, or they just kind of realized that it's confusing to say it with E, so they started readapting using the ka a lot more. But there's another theory as to how this ga entered Korean, and it's as you might guess, ga in Japanese. Now, Imjin Weiran was a period where Japan invaded Korea, and that was in the late 1500s. If you look at the linguistic records, we know that ka came about a lot more during this time. Remember I said until the 1600s it wasn't really common? Well, by the 1600s, this ka was in full use. So. It's about the same time that after this Japanese invasion, this ga started to see more widespread use. So, did this ga actually come from Japanese ga? Mm, not likely, actually. Although this seems to fit. It could have been influenced, definitely, by Japan. Ga already existed in Korea, just not quite as much. So, sometime around between the 1500s and 1600s, Koreans realized, hey, this is a useful word, let's start using this too. Uh, there's some other theories also that it came from a different particle in Korean. So it's safe to say that although this particle wasn't really used before the 1500s and 1600s, it was probably, maybe, influenced by the Japanese ga, at least to become more popular. So we don't really know, I'll just say that. So now let's talk about some of the differences between these two characters. We've just been talking about some fun history. One thing you'll notice right away is that in Japanese, when you're introducing yourself or saying someone's name, they will use this one. Whereas in Korean, they will use the subject marker. I'll give you an example. So in Japanese, when you're saying your name, you typically do something like namae wa. Whereas in Korean, they'll more often use e after idom. Now it's not that you have to, but typically it just tends to get used more with this than it does in Korean. Now, a lot of things in Japanese they would use with the subject marker, whereas in Korean, they use them with the object marker. So things like hoshi, like things you want, would in Korean, they'd just be wonhada. Dekiru, things that you can do. Halsu itta, wakaru, understanding, they just use ie hada. Jozu or heta, they would just say chal hada or chal botada, like that, being good or bad at something. And then finally, suki and kirai, things that you like and things you dislike. These would also be used with the subject marker, whereas in Korean, you would typically use the object marker with the active verbs chua hada and shiro hada. Although you do have the options of also using subject markers with chota and shirta as well. There are also many cases where you might use the subject marker or even the object marker in Korean, whereas in Japanese, you would use a different particle, ni, which would be kind of equivalent to the Korean e particle. So let me write some of those. Okay, so first we have charsuter manada, to meet charsu. Well, in Japanese, they would use that with ni, ao, to meet someone. Sonsengnim i, toeda, to become a teacher. Well, they would use that as sensei ni, naru. Hakyoru, Kada, to go to school. Well, again, gakko ni iku. Kicharu, tada, to ride or to get on a train. Well, densha ni noru, densha ni. Notice how it's 
object marker here, and Japanese uses ni. So that's another different thing, is that when people learning Korean first go to Japanese, they are often going to do things like charsu wo au, or sensei ga naru, or hakkyo wo iku, and that has a different meaning, you know, or densha wo noru, like that. Just another thing to be careful about. So those were just some of the most common mistakes that I've seen, some of the most common differences between the two languages with those particles. But I have one more thing, which is more of just an observation I've had. Koreans tend to shorten or combine markers or even just remove them altogether. So, you know, obvious examples would be things like nanen becoming nan, or even sometimes just na. You don't even need a topic marker there. Urinen just becoming urin, or maybe just uri by itself. Another one would be oldier, becoming just oldir, or the same with oldie, just becoming oldi as well. So these types of shortenings or, you know, abbreviations don't really happen in Japanese and Koreans are much faster to shorten things than Japanese people will as far as these types of things go. Now, this video, of course, was only about topic and subject markers. And if we were to go into the other particles, well, you would find lots more differences than these. So whenever you see things that look similar between the two languages, please don't just think they are equivalents. They are never equivalents. You'll find tons of differences between any two particles in Korean and Japanese despite how similar they might appear on the surface. But are there any other usage differences between those particles that I missed today, between the markers? Let me know in the comments. I do read all of your comments. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys again next time. 그럼, 다음에 또 봐!